I am still whittling away at this little Blue S10 LS project. Um, I got my core supports cut out so that my radiator can fit forward a couple more inches, which is nice. It's not really necessary, but it's any extra space you can put into your, your engine bay is worth it. Um, the way it's set up now, it's got one bolt, and then you lean it forward to have to check your coolant, but the reality is, you know, it, hopefully you won't have a bunch of leaks that you have to check your coolant all the time. Um, so with it moved forward, the hoses that were on here don't fit, and the hoses that were on here didn't fit great anyway. So I'm going to try and make one. This is actually a, I think it's a full-size Chevy truck uh, radiator hose. It's a, 22 436 from Gates and it's got a lot of nice bends and it's the smaller inch and a half I think or inch and a quarter diameter for the upper hose which is nice inch and a quarter it's gravity and so um, I'm gonna take this brand new hose I'm gonna cut it up into a bunch of pieces and I'm gonna make it fit what I'm looking for is I want a nice tight bend right here off the radiator and then I'll use a union and I'll make a nice tight bend back into the water pump. And what that does is it gives me clearance for my exhaust pipe because I'm going to put an elbow, which is chucked up in my bandsaw that I destroyed the bandsaw blade on the other day because I was trying to be a little too aggressive on stainless steel and it killed my blade. So hopefully my new blades will be here tomorrow so I can cut that elbow. So I need to take just a hair off of it to get my placement. And then I can tack that in, tack my extension, and then I'm going to do a J-hook out the front of the front tire. And that'll be our exhaust. It's uh, plain, it's simple, and should get the job done. Ultimately, down the road, this is going to be a twin turbo car, so we can lop those off, put the turbos up there, and make it work from there. But for now, we're just going to run them up and forward. And we're going to show some of the pitfalls of doing that as we go along. Uh, let me cut up this hose. And then we will fit our upper. And then I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do with the lower, because I don't have a piece of that hose here, so I'll have to get something for that. So that's on my to-do list. <laughs> So, I have a nice tight bend there. Oops, almost got hit by gravity on that one. So I'm going to cut him off right about there. So now my elbow will go up and over, which will be just about perfect. So now... Yeah, I have a tighter bend than this, so it'll be even farther away. So at least I've got clearance for that. So then I'm going to cut this guy right in the middle of this bend. And I'm hoping I can cut it right there, rotate that guy around, and I'll have a good spot. This one might be a little bit more of a bend, and I might have to use it, but we'll figure that out here in just a minute. Yes, these are PVC cutters from the hardware store but they work really good for cutting hoses. There's that. So, neat little trick for hoses. Let's see if this will give me my extra angle that I need. This is actually for a sensor or a bleed port. It works really well, but this one's actually angled, so it gives you a little extra bend to it. Of course, I'm going to have to take this all apart, back apart to put my clamps on, but that's okay. And we're going to cut that guy right there first and see if that'll do. If that'll get me where I need to be, because it might be pretty close. I think that might end up working. If we have a pinch here where it uh, where it kinks in after it gets hot, we can actually wrap a hose clamp around that spot. It'll help keep it open. But I think that'll work just fine. If I want to use a coolant temp sensor in the upper hose, I can do that. 
but that's not really what where I want to take a coolant temp sensor from so I'll probably just put a plug here and it'll allow me to open that plug to allow air out when I fill it with coolant yeah, I think that's gonna work just fine it's almost like I planned that so I think I have a solution for the alternator I'm gonna get to that in the morning I have a manual steering box on the way hopefully it'll be here tomorrow or Wednesday so tomorrow I think I'll work on my column because I need to re relocate the lower outlet of my column through the firewall. So I'll probably do that in the morning and work on my exhaust. So it'll be a lot quicker for you than it is for me. I'm real happy with my radiator placement. So yeah, moving forward. Exhaust, coil relocation, plug wires, custom plug wires are in the midst. and column outlet relocation that one's I thought I thought of a kind of fancy way to do that I think I, I think it's gonna work out really well we'll show you that soon that hose clamp is about off the reservation there this hose doesn't fit anymore because I moved my lower part in an inch and my upper part in like three inches a lot more space in the engine bay which is good but now my hose doesn't fit So we'll make a new one. This piece of hose looks like it's got about the right length to it, or at least the right bend to it. And we'll have some extra. Cut you off right about there. Hoses to engage. That'll work just fine. So my hoses are solved. Now I can put clamps on those and work on my exhaust and my steering column because my lower pillow block came in. So we'll fix that probably next. Keep knocking these winds down. All right. So next order of business is the steering column you know that thing that attaches the nut behind the wheel to the car um, with these up and forward headers my column comes out right here and goes right into this tube so to solve that I originally thought I was gonna move to the left and down and then I realized there's a brake pedal in my way so I have to go straight down so I'm actually going to modify the column that was in this and change it so that my output shaft comes out right about there which allows me to put my universal joint there and then connect it directly to the steering gear um, to do that I have to decide where I want to put it I'll use a hole saw and make a hole this compressor is coming in uh, because we are at work today and then I will make a block off plate for the top so I'm actually going to modify the column that was in it, which is just a stripped down column, it doesn't do anything, except, you know, hold the, hold the steering shaft in place. Um, so I'm going to modify it, I'm actually going to shorten it, and then I'm going to use a pillow block mounted to the firewall for my lower mounting point, and just trying to keep it simple and easy, pillow blocks are, you know, 30 bucks. Uh, the billet ones are like 100 if you want a fancy billet one, but you can buy an industrial one for... 20, 30 bucks. So, uh, let me cut off the flange and then I'll cut my lower part of my column down, take a section of it out, weld it back together. That maintains a collapsing or uh, energy absorbing steering shaft. That way, if you run the front corner into a wall, it doesn't push the steering shaft through your face like a spear. Um, it will actually collapse internally to the uh, steering column, so it's a, a safety feature that's a pretty good idea to maintain. So, uh, I do need to pull both headers back off because the rear two holes on this side and the front two holes on that side don't line up correctly. But we'll do that after we get this column set in there. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm going to try. 
Yes, sir. Back to Kevin's excursion. Oh, are you kidding me? He forgot to hit put his hook in, huh? He was sitting at a red light, somebody plowed into the back. Oh, him, somebody ran into him? Smashed oh. the trailer right in the back of his truck. That stinks. Which trailer is it? I don't know. Oh, which is probably hauling something for those hardware. Nothing was on the trailer. Oh, dear. He was on his way to pick up a motorcycle. A motorcycle? I guess he's not getting a motorcycle now, and I've got to buy a back bumper. pretty but it'll do I'm a better grinder than I'm a welder. Let's let that cool down for a bit. my plastic bushing to melt. There. Now I'm going to put a pillow block right there on the firewall. And this will be my lower bearing. Everything will work just the way it needs to work. Do donkey. Well, this would be interesting. Hmm. Let's cut this apart.
Let's see if I can find another one of these guys. I'm super happy with that. Caliber slide. Got new re rear brake rotors because the ones that were on it were pretty, pretty ragged out. <clears throat> um, I fixed up the calipers. I'll show you what I do with these. These caliper pins need to be smooth and clean, so I'm gonna clean up the pins. And I use a drill bit that's the right size to run down on the insides of these to clean out the insides. And sometimes these are seized, and you gotta use a little heat on these to get them out. And then this surface here, where the pads ride, and this surface here, where the pads ride, needs to be clean. And I usually actually media blast these with a sandblaster. Uh, it's not sand that's in it, it's aluminum oxide, but it makes a really nice finish. And it allows the pads to slide really easily, and once the, when the pads are sliding easily, they will release, and that reduces drag. So, let me get this thing cleaned up, and I'll show, it, show you what it looks like after it's been cleaned. I'm not trying to open up the holes any, I'm just using a drill bit that fits the hole and uh, cleaning out all the schmutz that's in there. So I've got it all cleaned up. You can see there's zero corrosion in the places where the pads ride. My slides are cleaned up. These are the exact same slides as what I pulled out of here. Now they move nice and free. These boots are actually worn out. Uh, it needs a set of boots, but we're, uh, we're pinching pennies as it is on this guy's budget, so He'll have to change those on his own at some point. It's not a big deal, but it's something he can do on his own instead of paying me to do it. So I'm going to put some lube on this point. I'll put in my stainless steel slides and I'll put some lube on that. And then the brake pads can go in this and this can get bolted back up with a new brake rotor on the other side. Ooh, they're so smooth, they drop right out of there. Look at that. Move on over yonder. Rotor like looks like it came out of a swamp. Boy, it's thin too. It's been ground down a time or two. <coughs> so this thing's using a 2000 to 2003 rear brake system from an S10. It's actually a pretty good brake system. Works really well. And ultimately, the front brakes on this will most likely get a, upgraded to a race brake. But these rear brakes will be just fine until he blows up the rear 10 bolt and moves on to whatever else he moves on to. That's what the future has in hold. You can't do it all at once. It takes time to get these cars to the level you want them to run and you're always thirsty for more. <laughs> Wheels on the back. Well, no, we can't. I have to bleed these brakes yet. Um, but I got nice action on my calipers, so they'll release clean. Um, what's next? I am waiting on ignition coil relocation kits. I'm going to mount my coils on the firewall and just make a custom set of plug wires to run down, and that way I don't burn plug wires. 
and I'm placing them on the firewall because then I don't, don't need to buy extensions for the harnesses. Um, so that saves a couple doll hairs. Let's move up front and work on something else. But this thing's come a long way from what it was when it started. So I'm moving right along. I've had, had a pretty busy week this week, but you can see my lowered column with my joint. It's going to come out of here, right underneath my header. I got to cut a little bit longer double D three quarter shaft for my steering linkage. You can see we've upgraded to a 525 box, uh, Saginaw box, which we're going to utilize. I'm making some headway on this thing, but uh, I've been a little distracted this week with other items in the shop, but we'll get to those. Uh, you'll see all about those here soon enough. Uh, so we got the rear brakes all done. We're ready to bleed the brakes. We have, I'm working on the headers. The steering column's lowered. Now it clears my, uh, clears my headers perfectly now. Uh, with the new Saginaw 525 manual gearbox that we installed, we had an issue with the Pitman arm because the Pitman arm big end is a different uh, diameter. So we went with a 64 to 67 GMA body Pitman arm, which unfortunately is shorter, but it can be paired up with a first, you know, 64 to 67 GMA body Pitman arm and the center link bolts in and that resolves our steering geometry because when you have two arms turning at different lengths it creates weird bump steer problems so if you're switching from power steering to manual steering you want to do the idler arm along with the pitman arm so that they turn at the same rate uh making some progress on some other things i've got the belt figured out well almost figured out i need to find the right belt for it now because now my belt's too long uh, but the belt bracket turned out looking really good. It fits inside my header perfectly. Um, got to cut a piece of three-quarter double D for my steering shaft, and then my steering will be hooked up. And then uh, basically finish the exhaust, mount the coils. I'm going to change the fuel a little bit because the fuel line was getting kinked on the inlet. Um, just a bunch of little things to make this thing work a little bit better and hopefully go a little bit smoother for the fella. At any rate, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Have a great day out there. We'll see you on the next one.